In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to investigate Boyle's Law um, using PASCO Capstone and 850 Universal Interface. Um, so to start off here, um, we have in the first passport sensor port, um, our absolute pressure temperature sensor. We're only using the uh, pressure <clears throat> for this. And I also have a basic syringe. This comes with uh, each one of our uh, pressure sensors. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set the syringe to 60 milliliters. It's important you do this first uh, before you connect it to the pressure sensor. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time trying to get this up to uh, 60 milliliters. And you want it so that the uh, last line there um, at the bottom of the syringe right here is on the uh, 60 milliliter mark. So then we'll just go ahead and connect this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, compress the syringe in five milliliter increments. And with each compression, we're going to hold it um, because Boyle's Law states that at a constant temperature, which we should be having here, um, the product of the initial pressure and volume is equal to the product of the final pressure and volume. So any two point combinations should yield the same uh, product in theory. Um, so to start off, uh, let's get capstone opened up here. So this is what your screen will look like when you first open it up. Um, we're going to select manual entry for this. And in X, uh, we're going to create a data set actually, because um, we're going to be entering this in manually. So I said five increments of five milliliters. So we're going to start at 60 and then 55, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, and then 25. Um, after 25 milliliters, it's get, this gets quite hard to uh, compress. So um, I won't take it any further than that. And then on the y-axis, um, we're actually going to use the pressure sensor to populate our values. And so let's go over to the graph here. And let's change the x-axis to the data set we just created. Um, oh, I should actually label this. Um, let's just call this syringe. And units are milliliters. Okay. There we go. And now let's change the x-axis to something mean meaningful. And then on the y-axis, we're going to put our pressure. Amazing. And we're going to go to our uh, recording controls here. We need to go to keep mode. So this allows us to view a live data um, in each of these boxes. And once we've done each collection, uh, we'll hit keep sample um, and go through until we've gone all the way down to 25 milliliters. Um, let's just go into hardware setup real quick, confirm that everything is connected properly. We have a green line at the passport sensor, which means it is connected. Um, don't need to change any data settings. Let's just double check. Yep, we're fine there. All right. Um, so now we'll go ahead and hit preview. And so I'm just going to be using my left hand to uh, compress this against the table. So we're going to hit preview. And we see that's about atmospheric pressure for our current location. So that's pretty accurate. So we'll keep that one. And the key here is when you are compressing this, you need to let it settle for a little bit at each compression point. Um, because when you do compress it, the temperature actually isn't constant. So I need to give it a few to equalize. All right, so we'll keep that sample. And then we'll compress it down to 50 milliliters. All right, and we'll let that settle. Then 45. And let's let it sit there before hitting keep. And 40. It's getting kind of hard to hold here. And then 35. And then we're going to let it settle. And 
and 30. It's getting really tough to hold here. And then 25. So after 25, it is quite difficult. My arm is shaking a bit, struggling to maintain. And light keeper. All right. So now we can hit stop. And we will, let's zoom to fit all our data in here. So you can see not perfectly linear. What we should actually be expecting is a relatively inverse relationship between pressure and volume. Um, so let's go ahead and apply a curve fit here. Um, and the line meets pretty well, not perfect, but um, it definitely shows the inverse relationship. Um, so now let's go back to the table and we're going to create another column here. And we're going to have a new calculation. So we're going to open up the calculator here. I'm just going to have it calculate all these values for us. Um, so we'll just call this, we'll call it PV. Anything meaningful, doesn't matter. So we already have the absolute pressure selected. Um, that can be found right here in this menu and selected there. Um, so we need that multiplied by the volume times the volume. We select it from here again, syringe, there we go. And units, not really critical here, but Hit enter, go and close that. And you see for the first few, um, we're pretty consistent, um, or at least within uh, five, 10%. Um, here at the end, you can see I, my hand was shaking quite a bit to uh, maintain that pressure. And also my hand being in thermal contact with the syringe was changing the uh, temperature inside um, the syringe. So that's, that's why we got uh, a little bit off on these last two measurements, but for the most part, uh, the data correlates very well. And, um, we can see that relationship there.